Hi, let's answer 50 questions in the TOEFL Listening Comprehension section. Answer keys and transcripts are available at the end of this video. Let's start. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. Were you able to do the last problem in the math assignment? No, it was too hard for me. What does the man mean? Number 2. You don't seem really happy with your exam results. Well, I didn't fail, but I also didn't pass by much. What does the man mean? Number 3. Where are the dirty clothes? Have you taken care of them? They're in the washing machine. What does the man mean? Number 4. When do you think we should leave on our trip? If we leave on Tuesday, we won't have very much time for a visit. Why not leave on Monday instead of Tuesday? What does the woman suggest? Number 5. What was in the letter from the landlord? It was not good news. The rent has been raised. What does the man mean? Number 6. I've had to work way too many hours for the last two weeks. Your efforts have not been unappreciated. What does the woman mean? Number 7. Could you help me with this? I'll wash the lettuce if you'll make the dressing. What are the man and woman most likely doing? Number 8. Is Jack going with us to the restaurant tonight? I was unable to convince him to go with us. What does the woman mean? Number 9. Can you tell me how I can find the biology lab from here? Just go down those steps and enter the door after the first one. What should the man do? Number 10. Is Professor Nash a good lecturer? He doesn't speak very loudly, but otherwise he's great. What does the woman say about Professor Nash? Number 11. We have another history exam on Friday, and I hope this one isn't as hard as the last one. You can say that again. What does the woman mean? Number 12. Is the room ready for the conference? I don't think it's been set up. What does the man say about the room?
Number 13. Are you going to be able to stay up and study for the exam? I'm not sure. I'm on my last legs. What does the woman mean? Number 14. What did you think of the guest speaker? I was fascinated by his ideas. What does the man mean? Number 15. How's the weather today? It's just not as humid as it was last week. What does the man say about the weather? Number 16. How did the professor react when you explained that you'd missed class because you were ill? She couldn't have been more understanding. What does the woman say about the professor? Number 17. That was some air show. The skydivers pulled off some incredible feats. I thought so too. I just couldn't believe what I saw. What does the woman mean? Number 18. Do you think that the restaurant was too expensive? I was surprised at the prices. We barely had enough to cover the bill. What does the woman mean? Number 19. Are you going to be taking microbiology this semester? I wish I could put off taking it for another semester, but I can't. What does the man imply? Number 20. I'll see you at the first psychology lecture tomorrow. Then you did enroll in the course. What had the man assumed? Number 21. Let's look over the blueprints for the building one more time. Good idea. We need to be sure that the design is absolutely correct before construction begins. Who are these people most likely to be? Number 22. Did our team win the game? If the runner hadn't fallen, then our team would have won. What does the man imply? Number 23. That exam's going to be really difficult, and we have a lot of work to prepare for it. Let's get going on it now. What does the woman suggest? Number 24. Are you happy that Kathy is one of the members of our group for the class project? I'm not really happy about it, but I can manage to get along with her to get the project done. What does the man say about Kathy? Number 25.
Number 25. Can you believe that the department has changed the requirements for our major? This change wasn't unexpected. What does the man mean? Number 26. I'm not sure if we should try to buy a house in a few years or keep on renting. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. What does the woman mean? Number 27. Did you enjoy the sightseeing trip that you took last week? It couldn't have been more perfect in any way. What does the woman mean? Number 28. Were you able to deal with the part of the exam on medieval architecture? The topic was barely covered in the lectures, yet it was a major part of the exam. What does the man say about the topic? Number 29 I can't believe that there's going to be an exam tomorrow. I wish the professor had announced the exam a little bit earlier. What does the woman imply? Number 30. Here's a small gift for your birthday. It's something I know you like. So you did remember my birthday. Thank you so much. What had the woman assumed? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part B. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two students. Dora, could you please give me some help? With what? I kept putting off my History 101 paper, and it's due next week. If you want to pass the course, you've got to write that paper. I know. I thought that since you're a history major, you could help me come up with a topic for my paper. History 101 is about American history. You could write about the Revolutionary War or the Civil War or World War I. Uh, I don't want to write about wars. I don't want to think about killing and death. Can you think of something else? Why don't you write about technology, inventions that changed American history? That topic seems a little broad. Maybe I should narrow it down a bit. Well, you could choose one invention, the telephone or the airplane, for example, and write about its effect on history. I know. My favorite topic is cars. I'll write about the invention of the automobile and its effect on American history. That sounds like a good topic for you. Now, you'd better get busy. You only have one week. 
Number 31. What does the man ask the woman to do? Number 32. When in the semester does this conversation probably take place? Number 33. Why won't the man choose technology as a topic? Number 34. How much time does the man have to write the paper? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation about a tragic event. Did you hear the story on the news this morning about the apartment fire down the street? I heard something about it. What happened exactly? A fire started about 3 o'clock in the morning in an apartment complex with about 20 apartments. One of the apartments was completely destroyed, and several of the others were damaged. Do they know how the fire started? They're not sure at this point, but they believe that it was started by someone smoking in bed. It's a shame that one careless person can cause so much trauma for others, not to mention the thousands and thousands of dollars of damage. Even more serious than the damage to property is the harm to the apartment's occupants. I hear that several residents were rushed to the hospital, but at least none of them died. It's all so frightening. Do you know of anything I can do to keep this from happening to me? I guess the best thing to protect yourself is to make sure that you have a smoke alarm and a fire extinguisher in good working condition. The smoke alarm will give you an early warning that a fire has started, so you can call the fire department. If it is a small fire, maybe you can use the fire extinguisher to help put out the fire before the fire trucks arrive. That's good advice. I think I'll go home and check my smoke alarm. Number 35. What is the topic of this conversation? Number 36. According to the woman, how extensively were the apartments damaged? Number 37. What did the man say about some of the apartment residents? Number 38. What advice does the man give to the woman to protect herself from fires? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part C. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part C Directions In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear Listen to an instructor talk to his class about painting. 
artist Grant Wood was a guiding force in the school of painting known as American Regionalist, a style reflecting the distinctive characteristics of art from rural areas of the United States. Wood began drawing animals on the family farm at the age of three, and when he was 38, one of his paintings received a remarkable amount of public notice and acclaim. This painting, called American Gothic, is a starkly simple depiction of a serious couple staring directly out at the viewer. Now listen to a sample question. What style of painting is known as American Regionalist? In your test book, you will read A. Art from America's inner cities B. Art from the central region of the U.S. C. Art from various urban areas in the U.S. D. Art from rural sections of America The best answer to the question, what style of painting is known as American Regionalist, is D. Art from rural sections of America. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a talk to university students. Welcome to the orientation meeting for dance majors. All of you in the room should be students who want to be dance majors. Oh, please let me introduce myself. I am Dean Peterson, the head of the dance department. If you are majoring in dance, the most important decision you have to make is which degree you will get. Let me explain. There are two possible degrees for dance majors, and the programs are quite different. One is geared toward performance, and one is not. The first possible major in dance is the Bachelor of Performance Arts. This is a performance-oriented degree. It is intended for students who wish to pursue a professional performance career in dance or in choreography. The second possible major in dance is the Bachelor of Arts Studies. This major is intended for those of you who are interested in non-performance dance careers, in areas such as dance therapy, dance history, dance administration, or dance education. Either major is a four-year program, but many of the courses that you take along the way are different, so you will have to specify your degree choice early. I hope this information will help you to decide. Number 39. Who is the speaker? Number 40. What decision do the students have to make? Number 41. A dance major with a Bachelor of Performance Arts degree might be interested in which area of work? Number 42. What is true about the dance degrees discussed in the talk? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk about Cajun country. Now that we're all on the bus, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be seeing today. The area that we're visiting is called Cajun country. The Cajuns are descended from the Acadians, French settlers who came from the Acadia region of present-day Canada. They came in the 18th century during the French and Indian War when they were driven from Acadia by the British. They settled in southern Louisiana in the areas around New Orleans. They brought their French culture with them, and today, approximately a quarter of a million people in Louisiana still speak French as a result. We'll be driving by some sugar plantations and alligator farms, and then we'll be stopping at Avery Island. There is a factory there that has been producing Tabasco since 1868, are you familiar with Tabasco? 
It's one of the best known spicy sauces in Cajun cooking, and it's very hot. I hope you like spicy food because any Cajun food that you eat on this trip is going to be spicy. After Avery Island, we'll continue on to Lafayette, which is the largest city in Cajun country. When we arrive in Lafayette, we're going to visit Acadian Village, which is a Cajun theme park. This theme park offers rides, exhibits, shopping, and restaurants, all with a Cajun theme. Now settle back, relax, and enjoy the ride. I'll point out the interesting sights as we come to them. Number 43. Who is the speaker? Number 44. What is true about the Cajuns? Number 45. What is Cajun food like? Number 46. What will probably happen next? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a lecture given in a college course. The development of the radio into a worldwide force occurred relatively quickly. In 1920, only 19 years after Marconi sent the first wireless signal across the Atlantic, the world's first radio station was established in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and by 1923, nationwide broadcasting was possible in the United States. Radio broadcasting was initially totally uncontrolled, and each of the dozens of existing stations broadcasted its programs whenever and on whatever wavelength it wanted. The result for listeners, as you can imagine, was often a garbled mess. This confused situation in radio broadcasting lasted until the Federal Communications Commission, which is often referred to as the FCC, was created in 1930 by the United States government. The initial purpose of the FCC was to regulate radio broadcasting. Each station was assigned a wavelength for its broadcasts to minimize interference from other radio stations. Number 47. What is the topic of this talk? Number 48. This lecture would probably be given in which course? Number 49. How could the situation in early radio broadcasting best be described? Number 50. What do the initials FCC stand for? This is the end of Section 1.
Click this video to answer 40 questions in the TOEFL Structure and Written Expression section. My name is Andrian, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.